Hello, I'm Chuck Stull uh, from Kalamazoo College, uh, looking at law and economics, and uh, particularly looking at economic welfare for this video. Now, Friedman in the uh, textbook promises that economic theory can provide useful tools to evaluate laws. And one of those uh, important tools is welfare analysis. And that's what this um, set of slides is about. Welfare analysis is a fundamental tool for economists. Welfare analysis looks at how people value a good or service. We look at the value to consumers and the value to producers, and that should give us the social value of a product. And it's based on a simple idea. If consumers are willing to pay for something, then their own value must be greater than or equal to the price they paid, or otherwise they wouldn't pay it. Similarly, if producers are willing to sell something, then the price that they receive must be greater than the value they put on it, or otherwise they would not sell. So let's start with the consumer side. Um, if we look at a demand curve, we see uh, something that hopefully is familiar to, to all of us. Uh, but the demand curve shows us willingness to pay. And we can see that some consumers, the ones uh, farther to the left, uh, are willing to pay more than other consumers. Right. So since some consumers place a higher value on the good, it means that they have a higher benefit from it. And what the demand curve simply does is place these consumers in, or in order of how they value the good. So we can see the consumers uh, to the left right, place higher values than consumers to the right. Another way to think of this is that the um, marginal benefit is equal to the value of one more unit of this good. And so that means if only a small quantity is available, price will be high. It will go to the consumers who value it most. Uh, if more is available, the price will be lower. So some consumers will be able to um, purchase it for much less than they value it, and more consumers will be able to buy. So let me put in a particular price. And we can see at this price, the uh, number of consumers who will buy it is going to be Q1. And that last consumer, or the, whoever that very last person is, will pay exactly what the product is worth to them. So maybe it is uh, cost them $5, and they value it at $5. So in that case, price would be equal to the marginal benefit for that consumer. But the other consumers, the ones to the left, the one between zero and Q1, they're going to pay less than their uh, maximum value. They're going to be able to buy the product for less than it is worth to them. So that is some extra value or net value to them, right, or surplus value to them. Right, so if we look at the difference between the uh, willingness to pay shown on the demand curve and that P1, the price they actually have to pay, you can see for all of those consumers that the differences, uh, all the consumers up to Q1, right, that they have some net benefits. And we call those net benefits the surplus to the consumers or more familiarly consumer surplus. Right, so consumer surplus is the difference between willingness to pay shown on the demand curve and the price paid. Right, so consumer surplus is going to be a dollar value, some millions or billions of dollars, or hundreds of dollars, depending how big the market is. Um, it shows us the net value to consumers, the difference between what consumers are willing to pay and the price they actually have to pay. And geometrically, it's going to be the area underneath the demand curve, but above the price line. Now, consumer surplus will change depending what the price is. Uh, if we have a lower price, 
we will have uh, more consumers able to afford it, and so we will increase our quantity, our number of consumers from Q1 to Q2. Right. But those early consumers, the ones to the left, because they're paying much less, their net value is going to go up substantially higher. If we look at this large triangle, the new consumer surplus, right, the area between the demand curve and the new price line, we can see it's much, much bigger than the initial uh, triangle that we had when the price was high. Right, so lowering price and increasing quantity is going to give us more net value to consumers, more net value to society. Turning to producers, we look at the supply curve. The supply curve shows the producer's willingness to sell, and this is based on the marginal cost of production. Producers will only sell if the price is greater than the marginal cost of producing the good. Otherwise, they wouldn't make any money. So if we look at a particular price, we will find how many units of this good the producers are willing to sell based on their marginal cost. And the price is going to equal the marginal cost for that last unit sold. But for every other unit, that price, P1, maybe $5, is greater than the marginal cost of production. So there's some extra money there for the producers, right, or producer surplus. And so producer surplus is the net value to the producers. It's the difference between the price they receive and the marginal cost of producing it. Right? And so this is a, a dollar figure again. Um, it's a profit-like measure, so the producer surplus could be $500 or $5,000 or $5 million, again, depending on the size of the market. Producer surplus depends, of course, on the supply curve, but it also depends on the price. And if we had a higher price, right, the producers would be willing to sell more, right, a higher quantity, so shown here as the increase from P1 to P2, an increase in Q1 to Q2, and you can see that the um, producer surplus has gone up substantially. We now have more goods being produced and some net uh, revenues on them, or some net value, as well as higher uh, prices for all of those earlier units, um, and that also increases the producer surplus. And again, that will increase the uh, total social value. So we've looked at consumers and consumer surplus and producers and producer surplus. If we combine these, we can look at social welfare. And social welfare in this model is really quite simple. To find the value to society, we add the net value to consumers and the net value to producers. So we can look at this on a supply and demand graph. The value to society, um, looking at supply and demand, we are going to first find our equilibrium, the intersection of the supply curve and the demand curve. This is the point where quantity supplied will equal quantity demanded at that price. So this is our P star and Q star. And we'll use exactly the same definitions as we had before. Consumer surplus is the area beneath the demand curve and above the price line. Producer surplus is the area below the price line but, but above the supply curve. So if we put in those two shaded areas, we can see our consumer surplus um, and our uh, producer surplus uh, are at the um, maximum level that we have the highest consumer surplus and producer surplus uh, combined possible given the supply curve and given the demand curve. And this shows us our net value to society. That also shows us the market efficiency of our optimal outcome. 
our resources here are going to the highest valued use, to the consumers who most value it. The uh, process balances the desires and needs of consumers with the cost of production. And at that uh, intersection, the marginal cost of production is just equal to the marginal benefit uh, of consumption. Right? And so we've fully balanced um, our consumer side and our producer side. Under ideal conditions, free markets will lead us to this optimal outcome. Um, maximizing consumer surplus plus producer surplus or maximizing net benefits to society but there are some problems that may prevent markets from reaching there on their own. This has been a quick overview of welfare analysis. This is Chuck Stahl from Kalamazoo College. Thank you for listening.